welcome. My name is Julianne Cost. On today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to be taking a look at 10 of the little features in Photoshop CS4. Okay, actually we're going to be covering a lot more than that, but I've put them into 10 groupings, plus one grab bag. You see, I know that every release, Photoshop adds those really slick features, like review mode in Bridge, and selective non-destructive editing in Adobe Camera Raw. There's scene carving and all the new 3D functionality in Photoshop, and everybody talks about those features. But what about those lesser known feature enhancements and refinements? Well, they might not make the A-list, but they can save you hundreds of mouse clicks and countless hours over your work weeks. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to begin by going under the window menu and showing my application frame. Right now, you can see the desktop in the background, and I happen to have my desktop set to gray, but I know that a lot of you either have pictures of family or friends or the last vacation that you took, and you might not want to be viewing that desktop as you're working on your images because the color in the desktop can really affect how you make color changes in Photoshop. So if you choose to turn on the application frame, you'll notice that Photoshop takes over the desktop and hides the background, whether it's another application or just the operating system. Now, if you're on Windows, you're probably used to this because that happens automatically. But on the Macintosh, it's quite nice because, especially for those people who are just learning, I tend to see them accidentally click on the desktop and then all of a sudden they're out of Photoshop and they don't know where they are, and so this will prevent that. But the other thing that it allows me to do is resize Photoshop. So you'll see here, as I start dragging the lower right-hand corner, I can actually make the entire application smaller. And what that allows me to do is drag it to a separate monitor. So let's say, for example, I was working with both Photoshop and Lightroom. If I have two monitors, I can actually drag Photoshop to one monitor and work on Lightroom on my second monitor. All right, let me go ahead and extend this. All right, I just want to make sure it fills the whole frame here for the rest of this presentation. But it's a really nifty feature. And you might be thinking that you could have done that before in full screen mode, but if you go to full screen mode, certainly you can drag your palettes to a secondary monitor, but you can't drag Photoshop as a unit to that secondary monitor. Okay, something else you might notice. When you open up multiple documents without the application frame, so I'll turn that off for a moment, you'll notice that they come in cascaded, as they always have. Once I turn on the application frame, by default they're going to appear as tabs across the top so that I can quickly move from one image to the next. Now, if you're familiar with the keyboard shortcuts from previous versions, you'll know that Control Tab, and that's Control Tab whether you're on Mac or Windows, will cycle you through your open documents. We've added another shortcut, and that's Command Tilde, on the Macintosh, or it would be Control tilde on Windows, that will also cycle you through your open documents. Now, you might be wondering why we did that. In most of the other Creative Suite applications, that is the shortcut to move through your open documents. So we thought we would bring Photoshop into alignment with those other applications. Of course, if you prefer the Control tab, that's still going to work as well. All right. If you don't like to work with the tabs like this, but you want to work with the application frame, you can choose under the window menu, arrange, and then you can either float a single image or you can float all of your windows. And you'll notice that when you do that, it looks very much like cascading the images. Now, I'm going to go back to the tabbed view, and I could do that under the window menu, like we just did, or I can use the arrange documents icon here and that will quickly allow me to move those all into tabs. We'll talk a little bit more about the Arrange Document icon in a moment. Before that, we need to talk about the application bar, which is where we find, of course, the Arrange Documents. So this bar is new, and what it's going to allow us to do is very quickly access things that we would have had to have found in the menus. Now, some of you might know the keyboard shortcuts for some of them, but for people who don't, it's much easier to simply click here to show your guides or show your grids or show your rulers. So I can quickly say, yes, I need to see the rulers on this image, or yes, also show me my guides. In fact, while we're on the topic of guides, I'm just going to drag out a guide for a moment. You see how that's cyan? I've always disliked that color as the default guide. So I'm going to show you very quickly. If you go to your Preferences, which is Command-K, or you can use the Photoshop menu if you're on the Mac, or you can use the Edit menu if you're on Windows, 
If you come down to Guides, Grids, and Slices, you'll notice that you can change the color of your guides. So if you don't want that bright cyan guide, you can change it to something like light gray. Or you can go up here to Custom and choose whatever tonality of gray you want, click OK, and now you're no longer stuck with those vibrant turquoise guides. So I like that a lot better. If I want to turn those off, all I need to do now is turn off Show Guides or turn off Show Rulers. Much easier than having to memorize the keyboard shortcuts or go to View and find those options from this long list. And I think you'll find that true through the rest of the icons here. They're really just to help you get to different places more quickly than looking through all the menu items. If you wanted to reposition the application bar, you can do that, but you need to turn off the application frame first. Because I have heard some customers say that it takes up just a little bit too much space on their monitor. So once I turn off the application frame, you'll notice that I can move this, and it actually becomes much smaller. So now I could reposition it. I'm, in fact, I can even reposition it on top of my options bar. Now the only problem might be is if I pick a tool that has a ton of options, um, I might not be able to see them all, but it does kind of give me an extra little bit of real estate here on my monitor. So up to you whether or not you want to do that. For now, I'm going to go ahead and dock it back with the options bar by just dragging and dropping. You can see I docked it right below so you can reorder them or you can dock it right above. And since that's the default, I'll go ahead and leave that set there. Now let's return back here for a moment to the Arrange Document icon. We've noticed that this first icon will consolidate all of our images into tabs, but look at all of the other options we have here as well. Let's say I want to look at all four of my images. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'll select my Zoom tool, hold down the Option key, and zoom out. And the reason that I'm zooming out here is because I want to fit all four images up. I guess I could go ahead and view them four up and then zoom out, but it might be easier to zoom out first. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I actually had the Zoom All Windows option clicked here. So when I zoomed on the front image, or the active image here, all of my other images were also zooming out. All right, so let's go ahead and change the way that they're arranged. If I want to tile them all in a grid, I can select the second option here, and then I can see all four of my images. Now, let's say I want to zoom in on this first image here. Typically, I wouldn't have the Zoom All Windows options on, so I'm going to uncheck that, and I'm also going to uncheck the Resize Windows to Fit. Because when I zoom in here, I just want Photoshop to zoom into this one image in its own window. I don't want it to expand that window. So I'll zoom in quite a ways, and now I decide that I want all of my other windows to be at the same zoom level and in the same location. Again, instead of moving over to the Window menu and getting the submenus, all I need to do is click on the Arrange Documents icon, and now I can choose to match my zoom, my location, or match both my zoom and location. Now, once I'm zoomed in, if I tap H and get the Hand tool, I can hold down the Shift key. That will automatically turn on or temporarily turn on the Scroll All Windows. So if I drag with the hand, while I've got the shift key down, you'll notice that all of the windows are moving. And of course, you can choose to arrange these images in a multitude of different ways. So it will show you icons, or it will gray the icons that you can select from. And you can see here that it's going all the way to four up because I have four images open. The five up options and six up options are grayed out because I don't have that many images open. So for now, let's just select one of the four up and you can see that we can now look at all four of the images. And if I want to select one, grab my Zoom tool and hold down the Option key. That's going to help me zoom out. That would be the Alt key on Windows. And if I hold down the Shift key as well, you'll notice that they will all zoom out at once. So I think it's a lot easier in Photoshop CS4 if you're working with multiple images and you're trying to compare them or look at different areas because you can now use this Arrange Document icons to quickly move between images and see different images that you're looking at. So it gives you a lot of added flexibility. And of course, all of this can be customized for your workflow. The application frame, the application bar, you can move that around. That can be saved as part of a workspace. And in fact, now in Photoshop CS4, you can save those workspaces across multiple monitors. 
All right, let's talk about zooming for a minute. I'll go ahead and consolidate these back into tabs, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Command Plus here, to zoom in and zoom out. And you can see how much more quickly we're zooming. Plus, look at this, I'm at 66.67%, and you don't see any jaggies. And the reason that we're able to make this not only faster, but also cleaner as far as the display goes, is because we are displaying through hardware accelerated GPU. So, this nice smooth on-screen pixel renders just fine, and in fact, if you move in beyond 600%, you can see here that we've got a pixel grid view, and when we zoom out, you'll see that automatically will disappear once we get below that 600%. All right, let's zoom in a little bit and let's talk a little bit about when we're moving around. So if I want to grab the hand tool right now, I would select the space bar and watch what happens. When I click and drag, when I let go, Photoshop still kind of eases in the picture, so it's not abrupt. See, the old behavior, if I just let go of my cursor, it would just stop exactly where I was. Now we support what's called toss physics or flick panning where you can move left, right, up or down, and you can click and kind of toss the image in the direction that you want it to go. Again, if you don't like the behavior, just click and hold instead of clicking and let going, moving the cursor in the direction that you want to flick the image or pan the image. We also support multi-touch support on Mac laptops, so you can pinch or swipe or rotate, zoom and scroll with just the touch of your fingers. Okay, a few other keyboard shortcuts while we're talking about zooming. Uh, Command-1 will actually zoom you in now to 100%. That would be Control-1 on Windows. And Command-0 will now zoom you out to fit in screen. And again, we change those keyboard shortcuts because that brings them in alignment to the other suite applications. All right, let's talk about some preferences now. If I go under Photoshop and I go to Preferences, we'll just start in general. I'm not going to talk about all the preferences here because a lot of them are similar to previous versions, but there are a lot of preferences regarding zooming. So the animated zoom, zoom resizes windows, zoom with scroll wheel, so if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can use that to zoom. Zoom click point to center, that's excellent. I usually turn that on, which means wherever I click, we're gonna zoom right on that area where I've actually clicked. And then here's where you can tell it to either enable or disable the flick panning if you just don't wanna turn that on for some reason. All right, under interface, when you go into screen mode, which I should have mentioned before, you can now, of course, always go into full screen mode like you could before, but there's only three screen modes. And the reason is, is because, of course, we have that application frame now. But a lot of folks wanted to be able to change the background behind there, and they didn't know the super secret keyboard shortcut. So now you can pick a color here for the standard screen mode, full screen with menus, or full screen. And you can also choose whether or not you want to have a very thin key line around your image, whether or not you want a drop shadow, or if you just don't want anything around your image in full screen mode. So I think that'll make a lot of people happy there. Using the grayscale application icon, that's up to you. That just refers to the little Photoshop that's in blue here or the bridge that would be in orange. Some folks just don't want to see any color there, so you can turn that off. You can also choose to show your channels in color. Now, this is on the channels palette. That's what that's referring to. Show your menu colors. That's actually when you go in and colorize your menus and they appear in color. You know, if you're trying to train someone in Photoshop or something and you want the important things that you're trying to cover to be a little bit more highlighted, you can actually colorize those. And then showing the tool tips. I usually leave those on. You can always turn them off after you know what everything is called and you don't need to see them anymore. As far as panels and documents, you can auto collapse the iconic panels. You can auto show your hidden panels. You can remember your panel location. That's very important. Always leave that on so that when you quit and come back the next day, all of the panels or what we used to call palettes are arranged exactly how you had them set up. If you don't want Photoshop to automatically open your documents as tabs, you can uncheck this option or this preference and enable floating document window docking. Um, excellent feature, I typically leave that on. All right, there's not much new in file handling. We've made camera raw edits much, much more easy because while you're in Bridge, there's actually an icon. So it doesn't matter if you're working with JPEG files or raw files or DNG files. If you want to open them in Adobe Camera Raw, you just click that open in camera raw icon. 
so there aren't a bunch of preferences here for the file formats that we support. In fact, this preference right here, the preferred Adobe Camera Raw for supported Raw files, really refers to do you want Photoshop to open your Camera Raw files or do you want a different application to open it? If you do want to look at your Camera Raw preferences, you can simply click right here and it brings up all of the Raw preferences, default image settings, cache, things like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that right now. And let's just move on a little bit further here. As far as performance, I just want to point out this is where we're getting the GPU settings here. We've detected a video card, for example, on this machine. And there's advanced settings here as well that you can take a look at when you have time. All right, as far as cursors go, one new thing, the brush preview, you can choose a color here. This is very, very cool, but um, you won't know why, just seeing the preference here, but I will show it to you in just a moment when we return to Photoshop. You can now um, drag to resize your, your brushes, and that's going to show you the density and the feather on your brush, and it's going to show it in color. So if you don't like red, this is where you would change that. Guides, I just showed you how to change the color of your guide, which is quite handy. You can also just click in this swatch right here. That would bring up the color picker if you wanted to change it there as opposed to choosing custom from the drop-down menu here. Plugins, this is very cool. Extension panels, you might wonder what that is. That's going to allow us to load additional panels because all the panels now in Photoshop CS4 are flash based so any developer can create a panel and then we can access that as long as we have this option turned on right here and I will show you an example of that in just a few moments and then I believe there are a few new options for um, type here nope come to think of it I think these were all in the previous version all right excellent so let's go ahead and move out of our preferences and let's move on to the next feature, which I absolutely love, which are spring-loaded cursors. What is a spring-loaded cursor? Well, let's say you have the Move tool selected. So I tap the V key and I got the Move tool. And now I just want to use the Marquee tool for one moment to make a selection. So if I press and hold the M key, you'll notice I get the Marquee tool. If I wanted to change one of the options here, I can do that. I click and drag. I'm still holding down the M key on the keyboard. I finish my selection, and when I let go of the M key, it automatically takes me back to my previous tool. In this case, it was the Move tool. All right, let me give you another example of that. I'll deselect this. Let's say I've got my Pen tool selected, and I start drawing a path, and I decide, oh, gosh, you know what? It's much easier for me to draw this path if the canvas was rotated. Now, I want to rotate the view. I don't actually want to change any of the pixels in the file. I just want to rotate how I'm seeing my image. If I tap the R key and hold it, you can see I get a little rotate icon. I can click and drag to rotate my view. I let go of my spring-loaded cursor, or the R key, and it gives me back my pen tool, and then I can continue working on my path. Tap and hold the R key. I can change my rotation, let go, I get the pen tool back. So those are spring-loaded cursors, very, very useful. All right, I'm going to tap the delete key twice just to get rid of that path because I don't need it. I'll tap the R key and go ahead and reset the view here. Next on the list is going to be some of the new features and added functionality to some of the tools because remember, every time we ship Photoshop, we, we don't add a ton of new tools, but we are refining the tools that we already have. For example, last time we refined the um, brightness and contrast. This time we made some refinements. We also gave a promotion to this set of tools right here. The eyedropper tool, the color sampler tool, the ruler tool, the note tool, and the count tool. So the eyedropper tool, you should notice that we can sample not only the current layer, but all layers now. Very, very handy feature. And when we select the note tool, when we start typing, you'll notice that we actually have a notes panel now. So I could say, wow, brilliant image. All right. And then if I add a second note, we'll go ahead and add that. Really, I mean it. Okay. Now we can scroll through all of the notes in our image here. So I think this is very convenient. Instead of having the pop-up notes come up all over the image area, it actually comes up in its own panel. So I really appreciate that. All right, for now, because those notes probably don't mean much, we'll go ahead and clear those out of there and take a look at a few of the other tools that we've enhanced. I'm going to scoot down here to my Dodge and Burn tool. 
and when I select them, you'll notice that we have an option to protect the tones. So not only have we made the algorithm better for dodging and burning so that you can dodge and burn in your shadows, your midtones, or your highlights, when you're dodging and burning, we're going to actually protect the tonality. I don't know if you remember before, but let's go ahead and try this without protect tones. Sometimes when you were dodging or burning, you kind of got this muddy gray area like what I just got right there. If I turn on protect tones and we undo that, this time if I'm dodging my midtones, you can see it doesn't turn that gray area. I'm actually protecting the tonality or the, the grayscale values underneath it as I try to dodge and burn to bring back detail from different areas. So that applies not only to the dodge tool but also the burn tool. And if we look at the sponge tool, you'll notice there's a new option here for vibrance. So the sponge tool is now taking advantage of the same technology that you'll find in Lightroom and in Adobe Camera Raw, and also in the new vibrance adjustment layer in Photoshop. Okay, let's talk about painting for a minute. I'm going to tap the B key to get my paintbrush. You can see I have a very, very small cursor there. If I was going to paint right now, I might want a very large cursor. So in the past, you've been able to either select a different brush or use the right bracket key and slowly get a larger brush and use the left bracket key and get a smaller brush. But now we have the ability to actually drag resize all of our brushes in Photoshop. And the keyboard shortcut for that is going to be the Option key and the Control key on the Macintosh. It would be Alt Control on Windows. Watch what happens. I click and as I drag, you can see my brush is getting larger or smaller. You might be asking, what is that red dot in the center? Remember when we were in Preferences and I said you could pick a color that would show you the density and the feathering of your brush? That's what I was referring to. So again, Option Control and click to drag up or down, I think you can see how much more quick you can change the size of your brush as opposed to using the right and left brackets. And if I add the command key to that, we're also going to be able to change the amount of feather, getting a harder or softer edged brush. Of course, there are so many more feature enhancements in the adjustments and the mask panel, as well as new features for auto blending, including combining bracketed exposures and, and extending depth of field and automatically correcting lens vignettes and lens distortion. But I'm going to assume that those topics, as well as, as features like 3D and content-aware scaling, will be covered in depth by many, many trainers. So before I wrap up this session, I just want to mention kind of a grab bag of other small features. And the first one I'll start with is printing. So Command P or Control P will take me to the print dialog box. And you'll notice that there's an option now for gamut warning. So some of the higher end printer models will have the ability to uh, preview the out of gamut colors here. And if you're on Mac OS X, if I go underneath the output area here, we now have support for 16-bit uh, data to send that to the printer. And you can now print greater than 30,000 pixels. In addition, if you're using Save for Web, we have the ability to convert to sRGB right directly in that dialog box. Let me just move to Bridge for one second, and I'm going to open this color test because I want to demonstrate another feature in Photoshop CS4, and that is the ability to preview or soft-proof profiles to support the colorblind. So I have this very colorful image that we can see on screen here. It basically has the entire rainbow of colors, and they range from black to white. And then I went and chose four different colors. And let's say, for example, I was going to design a subway map. And these are the colors that I've decided to choose. Well, if I select View and then Proof Setup, you'll notice that there are two profiles here that will help us to soft proof or view what this might look like to someone that has one of these two types of color blindness. So I'll select the first one. And we can still see distinctly there are four different colors here. They may not be the four colors that we had chosen, but at least they're each distinct, unique colors. But watch what happens when I go to Proof Setup for the second time, and I select the second option. Those four colors, the top two and the next two, look almost identical. So when I toggle on and off 
this soft proofing, this is what we started with. This is what someone who can see the full spectrum is going to see as a subway map. But look at how confusing it is. If you said red went in one direction and green went in another direction, for some people that would look identical. So this is available not only in Photoshop, but also Illustrator. And I think it's going to really help with designing things like maps and important pieces of information so that everyone is able to, to view them. Okay, a few last little very, very small things. Um, when you select a stroke effect, one of the nice things we've done is we've actually changed the default color so that it's no longer red, now it's black. Of course, you can set up all of your layer styles and save each one as its own style so that you don't have to use these defaults all the time. What you could do instead is set up your own and then use the styles palette right here to select them. If you're working with video, we now support single letter keyboard shortcuts for video and we also have smooth display of those non-square pixels. Um, there's a few new scripts that are installed. You can find them underneath the file menu going to scripts. You will notice there is flatten all layer effects and flatten all masks. Finally, we've improved the workflow between Photoshop and Lightroom. So now if you have an image in Lightroom, you can hand it off as a smart object. If you have a bunch of images, you can hand them off as panoramas or HDR images. You can even tell Photoshop to take a bunch of images from Lightroom and then put them in a single document on multiple layers. Okay, so that might have been more than 10 new features, but they were small, so I thought we could fit them all in. After all, this is the complete picture, and it wouldn't have been complete without mentioning that last bunch. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll join me on the next episode of The Complete Picture.